right. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Freeze Frame. We're this back. Is the, this is the podcast that gives you the weekly roundup on all the latest in movie and TV news. We thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you had a great week and are doing well. My name is Ryder, and I'm joined with my fantastic co-host, my good friend, other member of Strictly Casual, Luigi. Buddy, how you been doing? Hey, everybody. Um, been doing really good, actually. I actually found less news this week than i think any of the other weeks i have um Mm -hmm. since we started doing strictly casual like started pushing movies and tv on strictly casual which was interesting because you know i feel like not every news week has to be heavy which is good because it gives people Mm -hmm. the chance to like take a breather take it calm down take a breather exactly and i think it's the perfect time for it since one division just ended i feel like people Mm -hmm. need a break we've been really heavily invested in that um, I did see the trailer for the assembled show and it actually looks really Ooh, good. Yeah, I yep. actually will check that out. I will definitely check that out. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I've been doing great. Um, what about yourself? That's good. Um, I mean, you know, I've just been trying to, to pace myself, you know, I'm trying to get through school and I haven't been watching that much because I know Falcon Winter Soldier is about to come out in a couple of days and Snyder Cut and there's a lot coming out. So I'm trying to prepare myself and get ahead. But yeah, I haven't been that's watching. Right. I started season two of Fargo. But that's about it. But, okay, so you're, now you're on yeah. season two? Yes. Nice. It, I'm slowly getting to that show. It's not like a crazy thing for me, but yeah, I want to thank Bro. you guys for listening. Oh, so I didn't want to cut you off. I was no, no, it. no. I, so. I was just going to say um, I've been watching a lot of Paramount Plus. Like, I've really been oh, heavy right. in Paramount Plus this week. Have you even enjoyed um, it? Which is great. Yeah, I've actually been enjoying it. Um, but update on my review from before, they don't have a section where it's like specifically for your stuff. Like you uh-huh. can like tab things where it's like, oh, I like this or favorite, yeah. which I don't like. I need to uh-huh. they need to work on that oh, okay. because there's a lot of shows that I see that I'm like, oh, I would want to watch that later. Mm-hmm. But there's nowhere for I can there's no way for me to do that or somewhere for me to put that. Yeah. So it just kind of sucks. Right. Um, but little things like that, you know, but the yeah. service is still great. Um, OK, okay. so, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, before we get started here, let's go ahead and get into some housekeeping. We want to thank you guys that are listening on all the audio platforms that there are out there. If you're listening, driving on your way or just out and about, thank you for listening. We're going to be posting this on YouTube as well, so you guys check out our YouTube channel. We're always live on Twitch as well. We're doing all the shows on there. We are doing all kinds of variety of gaming. And you can find us on TikTok, Instagram, th- Twitter, Facebook. We're everywhere, you know, if you guys want to show your support. But that's about it. If you have anything else, we can go ahead and get started. This is, this is a big... No, we can go... We can go ahead and get started. Yeah. I have some yeah. some news that I think uh, is interesting because I heard it through the grapevine of the industry working on set this week. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about Superman and Lois last week and how they were taking a bit of a hiatus and we couldn't figure out why. You know, they aired one episode. People loved the show and they were like, wow. And then they moved it like three months. So I found out this week that was actually because there was a COVID outbreak on set and they had oh, to shut man. down production And so because production was so ready to just keep them going, they had this COVID outbreak. So then they had to halt the episodes that they already were planning on releasing and basically say, hey, we need like the three months as a buffer um, as we deal with this. And so they moved it to May. Uh And it's just very interesting to me that you don't, you know, that you stuff hear doesn't it. come out. You know, you're not going to be told like, oh, there was a COVID outbreak. So the show's moving. They said hiatus. They just moved the show. When they, were, they just said hiatus. When it's COVID. That's crazy. Right. That's crazy, man. Right. I was like, my friend, um, this guy who worked on the set I was working on this week, mm-hmm. he actually, uh, his brother is like a stuntman on that show. Oh, yeah. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, his dad actually did like a bunch of the visual effects for like Arrow, like the whole oh, season, okay, like, yeah. the whole series of Arrow. Yeah. Then they worked on The Flash. They're from Canada. This guy's oh, okay. from Canada. Makes he, sense. Yeah. He now lives in Los Angeles. But they lived in Vancouver where they did all the mm-hmm. shows. He worked on Supergirl. He worked on Arrow. He worked on DC Legends. Um, he just worked on all of these like yeah. CW shows and I was just like, what the heck? That's wow. crazy. Inside so his inside brother. Look. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> his brother was like, yo. So yeah, they had COVID outbreak. There was no, nothing like else going okay. on. Okay. That's like, interesting. Oh. Well, I wanted to bring it into this convo. <laughs> there you have it. Luigi with the exclusives. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> well, yeah, I got an, I got another one later on, but I'll, I'll, I'll save it for a second okay. and let you go. Okay. Well, I want to start off with this one because I think this is kind of huge already because when it comes to Mission Impossible, it's already a star-studded cast and there's already huge hype around it with the action involved. But they announced recently that the director, Christopher McQuarrie, announced four new actors that are joining the cast with photos of them in black and white. Excuse me, in black and white. We have Carrie Els- Elwes, uh, Indira Varma. We've been talking about her. She joined Obi-Wan. Um, we have Mark Gaddis and Rob Delaney and Charles Parnell. So of course, all these actors, you know, these names, if they're unfamiliar for you guys at home, I'm sure if you look them up, we have people from like Deadpool, one of the actors, uh, I think Rob Delaney, he was from Deadpool. 
And then, of course, Kerry Elwes, he's, I mean, the Princess Bride, like, he's, uh, right. you know, and then we have Indira Varma, she's from Asia. But, but either way, there's adding more and more bigger people to these Mission Impossible, these last two Mission Impossible films. I think it's pretty cool. Right. I personally, like, I'm more excited for that girl's Obi-Wan debut, mm -hmm. like, because someone on our TikTok actually said, like, it would be cool if she played the um, the girl that Obi-Wan kind of falls in love with. Man, I'm blanking on her oh. name right now. Um, okay. And the Clone but, Wars. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I thought she was um, with Bo-Katan. Well, maybe I'm getting that confused. No, hey, wasn't a Bo woman, bro. What are you talking about? No, he. Yeah, I thought Obi-Wan was... No, bro. You, well, you I did not watch. You, I you didn't it, watch so I Clone know. Wars. You yeah. didn't watch Clone Wars. No, oh, yeah, okay. I can't be giving false information. But she, she's got a name. Let me look it up while you talk about your next story. Hold on. All right. Well, yeah. Either way, it's it's pretty getting pretty stacked. And uh, speaking of stacked news, we have HBO recently came out. Warner Brothers and HBO released a photo of their giant slate of all the projects they're working on when it comes to TV and movies and gaming. Nice. And um, they were showing. Now we have confirmation Zantana. And Batgirl's coming. Uh, of course, we have the Arkham Knights video game and Flash, you know, CW stuff. But um, we post that Gotham photo. Knights. Yeah, Gotham, Gotham Knights. Yeah, Gotham Knights. Oh, what did I say? You know what I've noticed about you? You're very notorious for, like, having one word be off. What did I say? What did I say? Arkham Knights? You, you said Arkham Knights. Arkham you have the Knights. Arkham Knights okay. game. Yeah. Well, Gotham, Gotham Knights. Knights. Gotham Knights. But no, no, no. Okay. You're, yeah, not, yeah. You're, not, you're not too far off. But yeah. um, definitely a crazy slate, bro. Mm -hmm. Satana, we posted I think that's going to be like, you guys. that's going to be sick. Mm -hmm. um i'm looking at the picture right now shazam fury of the gods we know superhero high that like that sounds interesting mm -hmm. super pets static shock did you find yeah. the um bat wheels yeah um yeah i did find her name sateen sateen oh, okay, bro okay, okay. Come i think on, that's her man. sister You're over here, Bo I think, yeah see that's her sateen, sister i think right bro i think that mm, i don't remember i don't know okay, come on but it could okay. be i think you might be i think you might she was the she was the ruler yeah. of Mandalore. I was right. Yeah. She's a sister. Is it says? Chris, yeah. Okay, so, so apparently so she was the ruler of Mandalore, sister. right? And when she died or something, I remember hearing about this when I was looking up Mandalorian stuff. She gave the dark saber to Bo-Katan Bo in the cartoon, so that's why it's different in the Mandalorian series. That, but at right, least right, Bo-Katan right. still wants. But cool. so, anyways, the Obi Wan show. They saying that this actress should play Satine's ghost that Obi Wan sees, and oh, I was yeah. like, "Whoa, that's a very good theory yeah. for what p could potentially happen." Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just excited for them to, you know, grow that world of Obi Wan because I think everybody's excited for mm -hmm. that show. Absolutely. That's like, aside from Loki, I think most people are looking forward to like. And yeah. Obi Wan, was it coming out next year? Probably. It's probably. Probably yeah, out a long time from now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a minute, but. Anyways, this this DC slate is crazy. I have some other DC news here. Mm -hmm. uh, Henry Cavill apparently doesn't want to promote Justice League to send Warner Brothers a message for recasting, you know, wanting to go in a different direction without him. Oh, and okay. they announced this week that Zack mm -hmm. Snyder's Justice League is not going to be canon. It's going to be crazy. What? Uh, they're going to stick with the okay. Josh Whedon canon uh, version. Ah, man, and um, that's a big stab in the back to, yeah. I think, um, the whole back. franchise. But yes. I'm interested to see the movie nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And people are already starting to shit on it. Some people are already starting to love it. Some mm -hmm. people are already starting to do comparisons side by side. I'm seeing videos already drop. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, this is going to be like such a big movie moment for yeah. so many people. Like if you're a fan of DC, definitely. But if you're not a fan of DC, I think you're going to watch it either out of spite mm -hmm. or just out of curiosity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that that's just going to make it a lot of uh, it's going to make it more interesting for the people who, who mm -hmm. made it, you know, to see the response that they get. But Warner Brothers definitely is playing all their cards right now. Like, I'm mm -hmm. just like, damn, you guys recasted him. Mm -hmm. Henry Cavill said, I'm not dealing with this bullshit. I'm going to Marvel. And in fact, I got other news here. If we, I can just jump to it. Robert Downey Jr. reportedly wants to work with Henry Cavill and wow. they want to do a project together. So he's already wow. got the big players in his mm -hmm. little back pocket that are already interested in him. And I don't think he he's going to have any problems finding work, any problems oh, finding man. the next project. Henry Cavill's going to be set. He's doing Witcher. He's doing Netflix. Mm -hmm. He can come, jump to Disney if he wants to. He, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, Marvel, He's man. pretty much, Killed like, me. done it all at this point. You know, he's been a superhero. He's been the action star. I think the one thing we haven't seen him really is, like, well, I was going to say, like, a dramatic comedy, but I was like, like a Knives Out type yeah. of situation. Oh, I guess we yeah. could see him being on something like a murder yeah. mystery. That'd be interesting. For sure, yeah. Well, those of you that are excited for the Snyder Cut, Zack Snyder will be hosting... A virtual Snyder Cut watch party on March 18th for the fans. Of course, any of you guys can actually watch along with Zach. And, of course, he's going to have some special guests. And there's going to be a Q&A with the director. So you guys can look forward to that. As well as 
some more DC quick news here. Joe Maganello, he plays Deathstroke in the cameo of the Justice League. He said that he's not done with Deathstroke. He was saying that there are little irons that are in the fire. That's his quote. So I don't okay. know where we would see that version of Deathstroke come back in the DCU timeline. But hey, yeah, at least he he'll said, probably you know, spin off into his own show, man. Let's be oh, honest. I'd be, I'd be show hyped for that. Specifically about mm-hmm. Deathstroke. If not, he's, I'd I mean, I'm sure that. he's already been in Titans. I feel like Titans had a Deathstroke. Was it well, yeah, this Deathstroke? It was a, no, was it, it wasn't Joe Maganello. It was, but yeah, they have they've had Deathstroke in the CW and in you know like Titans and that universe. And but yeah, this right. Joe Magna, this is like full on cinematic one. I want I, I want more of that. It looked cool. Right, it looked perfect. badass. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie, he looked super yep. badass in the promos and even the pictures that they released of him, mm-hmm. um, which is really exciting because personally, like Deathstroke to me is probably one of those villains that is actually like very tactical. You know, yeah. like you play, you fight him in Arkham Origins in the oh, video game. So cool. And this shit, shit is such a crazy hard fight because <laughs> yep. it's like one misstep, you're getting fucked. Yeah. And it's like, it's so easy to fall into that, like spam the buttons and do this. But mm-hmm. like, they actually did a really good job creating him as a, as a boss fight in that yeah. game, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, but Deathstroke as a character, I wouldn't be mad if they brought him back or like they gave him a spin off or mm-hmm. worked him into like the Flash or something. Like, I think that's great. I think I think that they I think Warner Brothers right now and DC is like holding their chips close to the table and are very yeah. much just like, hey, guys, let's, let's wait see how see. the Snyder Cut does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we can really see if we want to continue to invest money in mm-hmm. DC. Because yep. I've said I said this, I think, two weeks ago or not, if not last week, which is if they don't make like a big, big, like, you know, press smash hit or like mm-hmm. a bunch of waves of news that are just like, yo, did you see this or like. I think it's just going to be the end of DC, you know, like I think it could be like one of the big things that just wow. starts that downfall to where we no longer see we get a break. Like yeah. 10, 10, 20 years mm-hmm. from now, there's no DC properties being wow. made on the regular. Because right now yeah. it's like a big, big like cow teat that they just keep sucking on of, like content, <laughs> yeah. just like Disney does with yeah. Marvel and Star yeah. Wars. It's the same thing, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't know if Warner Brothers is just going to continue to suck on that teat, but they might, you know, they <laughs> yeah. just might. You oh, know? my God. That's hilarious. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We have here The Boys is getting a spinoff, which when I heard about this, I'm like, what? oh, give me more of this. And this is this really? is actually happening. It's basically sky high, but rated R. It's going to be uh, That's cool. It's going to be a young superhero. It's basically they're recruiting. Um, the upcoming R-rated series takes place at Vought's Soup College. And so they already nice. have some two, ca- uh, two casting already. Um, an actress from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina's of Sabrina, sorry, Jazz Sinclair, and then we also have Lizzie Broadway. They're both playing young superheroes, so you guys can check out That's if you're cool. fans of them. But I mean, come on, the boys, more spinoffs? Yes, I'm always in for that, you know. Bro, the idea of an R-rated Sky High. Oh, I'm already. You so already good. bought my ticket. I'm already yep. sold. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> that sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, very exciting. It's cool that they're getting a spinoff. And, you know, we got a WandaVision over here not getting a season two apparently, oh, which man. I'm okay with. I'm completely okay with Kevin uh-huh. Feige said it's not likely it's not likely that's yeah. gonna happen which we talked about this during our WandaVision review which if you haven't checked out yet make sure to check out our WandaVision review we mm-hmm. had so much fun just mm-hmm. talking about the overall experience we had watching that show and it was so much fun if you if you've already finished WandaVision check out the review obviously if you haven't watched the show take your time watch it episode by episode and then go watch mm-hmm. our reactions on it on the strictly casual youtube channel mm-hmm. because we have so much fun doing those and we're going to be doing falcon and winter soldier loki mrs marvel she hulk what if we're going to be doing insane. it all mm-hmm. reacting reviewing talking about it and just having <laughs> yeah. fun doing it um but i want to close up here um with my another rumor that i heard on set this was actually something that was very interesting to me huh. because it was somebody that i had never worked with and they just randomly brought this up and it was about the last purge movie so i, I did some mm-hmm. research and apparently it's being called the forever purge yeah and mm-hmm. okay. there, there was a working title there's like no details about the plot at all like nobody knows what this movie is going to be about okay. but the guy told me that apparently this movie is going to be and this could all be wrong and it's yeah. going to be speculation but he said that it's going to be dealing with the Mexico-U.S. border, and it's going to take place at the border, and the purge is going to be what? happening at the border, and like oh the countries God. are just going to be like fighting each other. And I was like, that sounds really kind of uh, awesome. Yeah, that sounds insane. Um, for, for like a premise for <laughs> a purge movie. All laws are no, are gone. Yeah, right, right, right. The border, yeah. um, 
Right, exactly. But it's like, does the purge just work in America or are people just going to Mexico ah. and just like fucking those people up for no reason? <laughs> yeah. um, but they said oh, they man. said that um, the movie was originally called The Purge Borderline. Um, that's what oh, the detail okay, okay. And then they changed it to The Forever Purge. Okay. So I think the idea might be, now that I keep talking about it, that the purge is now forever because it's spreading into other countries. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Man, yep. So it's like the forever purge. Like now it's becoming a custom around the world, not just in America. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I could be yeah. completely off base, mm -hmm. but this is, I just wanted to talk about it again. Cause it's like someone, someone randomly brought this to me on set and they, yeah. they seem so sure about the way they talked about it, that it wow. just makes you okay. think like you clearly know something, you yeah, know, or yeah. you heard something mm -hmm. or you saw something. Um, so that was, that was, um, that was like I, another one of those rumors. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's all I have as far as like big thought provoking mm -hmm. what ifs. Yeah. Um, but if you want something a little bit more secure, I have Avatar's animated comeback, like we talked about, has mm -hmm. put Netflix's show in a tough spot because the Netflix adaptation of the live act of the original cartoon, the live action version is kind of like, well, do we still want to make this? Do we still want mm -hmm. this? Are people still expecting us to make it? And then is it just going to be a sole property that just stays on the platform? Should we test mm -hmm. run it to just make like the first season? Should we go ahead and make all books? Like there's just too many questions yeah. Netflix has to ask themselves at this point because, you know, Paramount Plus now has launched Avatar Studios and it's just mm -hmm. like, well, should we just cancel the project and just let them do what they do best? Yeah. You know, it's the, yeah. the originals. So... Mm -hmm. Just an interesting thing there. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, I can keep going if you want me to. I, I have some, this is a box office news. Ray and the Last Dragon, number one, with a soft 8.6 million debut in the the box uh, office. Isn't that rough. crazy, bro? That's rough, man. That's rough, bro. That That's that's so rough. Like, theaters haven't opened at mm -hmm. all yet, like, really. And it's just kind of like, you can tell it, it's just big hit, huge hit to the box office and Absolutely. the theaters around the world. Um it's just crazy stuff, man. Just crazy stuff. But anyways, bro, um, keeping keep going. Like, you got anything else? You got any other stories? Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a lot of stories. I was just letting you go because I was interested. Yeah, yeah. I was like so no, you... into it. Here, yeah. Okay, here we oh, go. Yeah, this yeah. is actually you... breaking news. This is breaking news today. Well, actually, like thirty minutes before we're shooting this, shooting the podcast. Um, we have Maribel Verdu has been cast as Barry Allen's mother in the Flash movie from Andy Muschietti. And so Billy oh. Crudup, who plays the dad, he was in the Justice League movie, is no longer starring as Henry Allen in the film due to scheduling conflicts. So it's kind wow. of unfortunate, but the good thing is that since they're casting for her, his mom, we can kind of get hints that, you know, they're doing the Flashpoint Paradox and they're doing the time travel and maybe we'll see the origin story like in the Flash TV show, you know, with Flash and reverse Flash kills his mom and he has to go back in time and stop that. So... I'm I'm getting really excited more and more for this movie because I love the whole time travel aspect. So we'll see more when the plot summary comes out. We'll start letting you guys know more about that. But uh, besides that, we have uh, a Bird Box getting a spinoff. We have some more spinoff. What? News. Bird Box is apparently getting a, a Spanish spinoff film at Netflix. Uh, production starting later this year. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty interesting as well. <laughs> I know, right? They were like, "Well, it's being successful. Let's let's make let's keep doing it." <laughs> and then, what's up? No, I never I, watched Bird Box. I never watched oh, it. Yeah. So I'm like groaning because I'm yeah. just like, I, yeah, it was all right. bro, some of these, some of these projects that you just like, the hype is so high that you just, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't fall into the hype, man. I just, yeah, I'm not yeah, a I big hype you. train yeah. guy. I'm not a part One of division was the hype. one show this year where I was mm -hmm. actually like following the hype train, um, mm -hmm. which is sick, man. I, I'll, I'm interested to see that. I don't know why it has to be a Spanish version because it's know, so right? random. That's what but, it said. I was like, well, whatever, but. Speaking of Netflix, this is kind of unfortunate too. They're testing an account verification feature. I'm sure, I think you've heard Saw about that. this. The crackdown on the password sharing, you know? Right. And so like, this is, what do you what do you think about this? Do you think this is, they should do that or? Well, I someone tweeted and it was the best tweet. They said, your content's not that great to even try to figure out how many people <laughs> oh, use using one password. And I was <laughs> like, damn, savage. Like, that's wow. so true though. I mean, all these streaming services at some point is just like over polluted with content that you just don't mm -hmm. ever watch everything you know like, there's no way you're gonna watch everything out I would, there you know i would love to see like the average percentage of what a viewer actually watches on their like if they have like a thousand shows let's say what's the, like the, uh, i feel like a person only watches like 10 percent of all the content they right. produce you know what i mean like is it worth mm. it making so much like netflix has so many things that i have never touched you know what i mean it's ridiculous I mean, right <laughs> it's funny because like even two three years ago you would say that and it would be like yeah but there's still a lot of things like the the 
the scope was so much smaller exactly. than it is now there's like way even now. More. There's just like thousands there's more thousands, things yeah. that you can watch. It's uh-huh. just like, geez, Absolutely. it's a little overwhelming sometimes. Absolutely. Um, I just want Succession to come back. <laughs> I'm being completely <laughs> yeah. honest. I just want Succession to come mm-hmm. back. Um, but another one of my favorite shows on HBO Max, The Righteous Gemstones, has actually started uh, filming their Ooh. second season. That show's also really good. If you haven't watched Righteous Gemstones, like solid comedy. Solid, oh, solid yeah, comedy. yeah. I, I remember seeing the billboard. Um, okay. Next up, I have Paul Bettany and Claire Foy to headline A Very English Scandal Season 2. This is an old British show, and I'm just glad that Paul Bettany's doing something else because mm-hmm. I was waiting for it. I was like, Paul Bettany, no news on Paul Bettany getting another job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, boy needs to step up, or someone needs to hire this man, snatch him. <laughs> um, and he got it. He got he got another job right off. The I think success. it's I th- I think it's Wanda. interesting too because as I was reading this, I was like, I wonder what that experience is gonna be like for him. Like, WandaVision must have been a mind fuck mm-hmm. compared to any other show you're ever gonna do. You mm-hmm. know, like you're just gonna <laughs> yeah. be like. Nothing You're gonna compares. be thinking. I'd be thinking back on it every single time I'd be on set. I'd be like, "Bro, what were we doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like everything is." And now I'm doing like that. comedy, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Everything would be like sub part of that. Um. Anyways, man. Uh, yeah. What, what else okay. you got? Well, we have William Defoe and Emma Stone in talks to join Lorgos Lanthimos, which he did the favorite with Emma Stone previously. Uh, it's called Poor Things, a new project. It's about a, a Victorian love story that follows a young woman was brought back to life by an eccentric and brilliant scientist who's played by William Defoe. So of course okay. this this director's always been, you know, if you look at his IMDb sheet, he's been doing a lot of interesting weird takes on films and interesting stuff. So I mean this is be one of those uh I guess film house as they call it or not film house. They'd call it more uh I don't know. It's like a film centric like uh, more like independently made i guess not independently made but you, you get what i mean it's more different but besides that we also have dakota fanning joining andrew scott in showtime's ripley the showtime is making a brand new show it's based on patricia uh highsmith's notoriously charming crime novels the series you start to film later this year so another oh. interesting i mean if you have showtime i mean that's again a lot of this stuff that we're giving out is just <laughs> streaming news you know bro i just recently got showtime my buddy cody oh, really? Who's uh, staying with me right now? Dang, um, so many. He just he I, he was like, "You got Paramount Plus?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "You mind lending me that?" And yeah. I was like, "Sure." <laughs> and he's like, "I got Showtime." And I was like, "I'll take it." You know, we just kind of trade <laughs> yeah, it yeah. off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, That's which is nice because at mm-hmm. least you know you get, everybody gets to watch it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's just cool. I I, I like I said I want to get to the point where the company is just paying for this stuff and like I don't have to worry about a hundred dollars yeah. worth of streaming stuff yeah. every mm-hmm. month and it's just covered. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Um, and you got you got anything else to say about that? Uh, as for streaming services, they always keep going. But well, this is something else, I guess. A connect the Disney Plus streaming services. So when it comes to the Star Wars show that's about to come out, you know, there's okay. uh, with uh, Ahsoka, we have uh, Thrawn. You know, Thrawn is the main villain that people know they are thinking that maybe he's going to be the villain in the Ahsoka series. People wanted Benedict Cumberbatch to play Thrawn. He was one of the fan castings. And he recently came out and he said, no, there is no way that I'm going to be turned blue. So that, right. that thought and that idea is completely thrown out. So right. I guess we can Dude, hope my, someone else. My man, Benedict, is making millions playing Doctor Strange. Like, he mm. doesn't want to go he doesn't do need anything to do that. else. He doesn't need like, to do that. Yeah. He's good, you mm. know? Absolutely. Um, I, got a, I got some cool news here. The director of John Wick is apparently going to mm. be making a movie that is Die Hard meets Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. a thriller. I think that's very exciting. Um, there's not much else on that except that it's just a concept coming, and I'm interested to see it. I'm sure Absolutely. in two I years we'll too. be like, guys, whatever the name of this movie is titled mm-hmm. is coming soon. You know? Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. And also, this is kind of interesting. I, I, I So many WandaVision little things. Guys, I guess the show ended. Now everybody's got all this news. Mm-hmm. Uh, the director of WandaVision actually came out and revealed that there was a cut scene. Revi- uh, there was a scene that was cut from the show that was featuring Senor Scratchy. Um, oh, yeah, which okay. is very interesting. Mm-hmm. And it actually was having um, Darcy. Darcy only had one line in the whole finale because her whole arc in that episode was her, Monica, Ralph, and Senior Scratchy getting the dark hold. Oh, yeah. And that yeah, was supposed yeah, okay. to be mm-hmm. their, their storyline. But we didn't yeah. see that because they just cut it. And they rushed, I, yeah. They said because of COVID, um, they had to cut the scene because I guess it didn't come out as, as much as they wanted. And mm-hmm. also, I saw on Twitter... The CGI on this show was like someone was like, You can't hate on this. 
because it's just a green screen. Like they literally just had yeah, they showed the <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen just <laughs> standing in front of a green, green screen, screen, and it looks like she's just in like a, a suburban neighborhood, and yeah. she's just it's crazy. No, yeah, crazy I didn't even how, know that they was CGI. Absolutely, I, I didn't know. It, I, I didn't like, know any of that was fake. Uh -huh. I was so surprised by that. I was like, what? It looks so real. <laughs> yeah. like it looked like they filmed that on a neighborhood, but mm -hmm. no. Marvel is really just like not spending any of their money. Like that, it's the smartest thing to do, in my opinion. Like mm -hmm. if you're making billions at the box office, try to find a way to cut costs because you're gonna want to keep as much profit as possible. Absolutely, but absolutely. Just interesting that they cut the whole scene like that. It's like a big arc. In yeah. The whole episode. Like <laughs> they even said they originally had plans for the director said he had plans mm -hmm. for Doctor Strange to show up in the finale, uh, yes. but mm -hmm. then that was cut because of COVID as well. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of like so there was a lot of things that the fans were gonna get, but they but didn't timing. because of because of timing scheduling because of COVID. it's crazy and that, that's what i was saying too because i know that it was supposed to come out later and because of the the covid it, it, that's what screwed everything over because black widow was supposed to come out falcon and the winter soldier was supposed to be some of the, the first mcu projects that we got and wandavision right. wasn't be for a long long time so we would have gotten a lot of more things that delve deeper into this mcu multiverse that probably would have satisfied more people but no, because Wanda, wanna... no, because Wandavision no? was always supposed to be first. Wanda was always supposed. To, they Kevin Feige said it during the investors thing. He said, what? "Our first Disney Plus property oh, is really? going to be." Bro, I just rewatched the Phase Four thing when they had the investor thing. I just yesterday, oh. I just rewatched it. He literally oh, said, "We're going to start with Wandavision." Before that, though, no, no. Before that, what he, they hadn't announced any of the Disney Plus properties until that stuff. What happened is, Multiverse of Madness was supposed to come out in May of this year. That's that? what was one division was supposed Bro. to lead us into that sooner, but now we're getting it a whole year later. That was the biggest mix up. That's why people were saying the ending of one division was going to satisfy more because you knew, hey, in two months, we're getting multiverse of madness. Yeah, yeah. You know, but instead, it all got pushed hmm. and it all got pushed and it all got pushed. So now we're waiting a whole year until we yeah. get any like second mm -hmm. part to the story for Wanda, you mm -hmm. know, and like yeah, everybody's yeah. fiending on the Wanda storyline right now. But I think you give it a couple of weeks, people are going to forget about it. And it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it's just another show on TV that mm -hmm. if you watched it, you lived through the hype. If you didn't, well, <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. you know, it's over. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm wrapping up here. I only have about one more. And then I get into my uh, light news here. We have this. Cool. Right. Oh, I'm lost. For Borderlands. We've been talking about the Borderlands a lot on the show recently. We've okay. got a lot of casting news. We have Eli Roth's Borderlands movie recruits Haley Bennett, which is a bigger actress. Uh, in a brand new role, or her mysterious character will apparently be a key to the past of Kate Blanchett's character, Lilith, who is the main character in this Borderlands film. So whoever that might be, we don't know yet, but at least another huge actor being cast in the film. And then, of course, we have more light news here. I can go ahead and get in some of it, and then you can finish off whatever I, you have. Yeah, I only have three more stories, and then I got the Rex. So Okay, okay. Well, I'll just I'll just say one or two of these. Let's see, we have... Uh, Kiersey Clemens will return as Iris West in the Flash standalone film. That was, I think, announced today. I, I guess people, we haven't had a confirmation on that yet. And then Ryan Coogler recently talked about making Black Panther 2. I'm sure you've saw, seen this too. Uh, without Chadwick Boseman, he said, this is, is without question the hardest thing I've had to do in my professional life. Making wow. the film without Chadwick. So I can only imagine, you know, trying to deal with the story and how you, like, Right, abruptly. balance out the characters. Yeah, like, how do you abruptly put that in a movie and then, but also honor him? And so I was like, oh my gosh, that would be that would be intimidating yeah. for sure. And definitely yeah. intimidating. Holy crap! You want me to go? I, yeah, I, you, I, you, I, my no, my three my, more my last two stories are just one of them is the Green Knight starring De Dev Patel is set to release in theaters on July thirtieth, twenty twenty one. I saw some images for mm -hmm. this. It looks kind of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. It's very like a fairy tale sci fi type mm -hmm. of show. Um, and then I had, there was an article that came out about Army Hammer that was just talking oh, yeah. about how his family Cannibal. saga <laughs> of sex, money, drugs, and betrayal has led him to kind of be kind of ostracized a little bit in the last couple of weeks from Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see how this guy who's like a big time, you know, a yeah, yeah. kind of falling off the star, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just wanted to mention it because he's a cannibal and all that, but like <laughs> yeah. super weird stuff going on in, in Hollywood. I think... So much weird stuff going on around the world right now. It's just yeah, yeah. We're we're in that like one year in on the mm -hmm. pandemic, and now people just don't know how to react anymore. You know, yeah, like yeah. We, we can't. We I don't think, I don't think we're we're able to handle it anymore. Luckily, we're on mm -hmm. the brink of it going back to normality. But like, uh -huh. I think I think I think we were at that point where we were just like, 
man, shit needs to change or something mm-hmm. needs to, you know, things need to go back to normal because it just, it's starting to get too much. You yep. know, it's starting yep. to become too much. People are becoming okay with being cannibals. Mm-hmm. It's just too much for me. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I just don't like it. You know, yeah, I yeah. just... I just don't like it. But anyways, that's that's it as far as my big news. I got one thing in light news here. Okay. Disney Plus tops 100 million subscribers in less than two years. It's a big accomplishment mm-hmm. for streaming service. Uh, Disney Plus, though, accomplished that. And, you know, I was I want to say, how long has Disney Plus been out? Less than a year, right? Three, three-ish, two-ish, 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 three-ish years. No way. It hasn't been two-ish, three-ish years. Because D23 happened in like 2019. This, and that's this when just they, said it's been I under thought, two years. Okay. Well so then it's got to be less maybe, than two Maybe years. it came out a long time after that. I could have... I'm just probably thinking that. I want to say I want to say they came out in September, mm-hmm. no? Like September Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm looking, up the, I'm looking up the release date right now. Let's see. Disney Plus release okay. date, November 12th, 2019. So it's been 2021, but under two years. Under. Okay, so like a year, under, a year yeah. and a half? Mm-hmm. Okay, but anyways, that was yeah. that was the big news, and I'm okay. just surprised now that you say that mm-hmm. Disney Plus has been out so long. I'm just like, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I think HBO Max recently came out with something where they're saying we're gonna have 150 million people on our streaming service within like a year or something. I think they just probably to like counter counteract that statement from Disney Plus. They released right, that. right. But well, it's all these funny. all these streaming services like to just like brag on each other like yeah. amazon prime came out and was like coming to america had the biggest uh viewership all oh. year as far as a streaming premiere and i was okay. like where are the numbers bro yeah like where I, the where, they I didn't release it. the numbers I but they just that. said that and i'm like i feel like <laughs> yeah. you're just hyping up your, yeah. your freaking platform mm-hmm. which i totally get yours everybody's a salesman these days everybody's just selling something it's just gets yeah. a little annoying after a while like the whole world's just covered in ads yeah, I just, yeah. sometimes i get really uh like not you know you get streaming to avoid the ads, but then it's like the regular world is just filled with ads everywhere. Yeah, which so mm-hmm. is crazy. I feel that. Uh, but anyways, man, you wrap us up, and then we'll head on over to our recommendations, and then that's all it right. for us this week. Yeah, that's it. Short week. It feels good to not talk about all Marvel. I feel like we've had like a lot of Marvel stuff, and didn't feel right. like there was that much Marvel this time. But anyway, speaking of ads, let me let me speak off some ads right here. We have My Hero Academia season five. Dropping Ooh. April 3rd. <laughs> okay. So episode one. And then episode zero apparently is a recap that's coming March 27th. So you My Hero fans out there can look forward to that. And then we also have Creed 3 dropping Thanksgiving of 2022. This is going to be Michael B. Jordan directing it. He's going to be directing this. Whoa. Cool? Yeah, that's he's, pretty. That's, I think that's, that's major. His, his debut, I think. And he was saying that he uh, got a lot of advice from, uh, of course, Ryan Coogler and some of the writers of Creed. So, I mean... We'll, we'll keep an eye out, see how he does on that. And then we have, let's see. Absolutely. Oh, recently a photo came out for House of Gucci, which is a crime biopic starring Lady oh, Gaga and Adam Driver. Yeah. And this photo came that. out of them, and they looked they looked hilarious. I know it's going to be more of a drama, but, I mean, already this movie, I mean, that casting has been great. Uh, directed by Ridley Scott. Then we also have uh, Better Call Saul. Season 6 is in production, and I think that's going to be their final season. So hopefully we wow. might get a tie into breaking bad which should be pretty cool and then we also I think have they've already i think they've already done all that with breaking bad because i think i thought better call saul was after breaking bad no no i think it's the prequel i mean we've seen Is a lot it? of characters yeah we've seen like oh, okay, Tuco, i believe and we've seen a lot of people from breaking bad but i think it'll end off where right where heisenberg walks in his shop and all those years ago that'd be sick but, yeah, that would be yeah, sick yeah that'd be pretty cool and then my last one here doom patrol season three recruits uh, Michelle Gomez as Madame Rouge. She's uh, been in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. She's been in The Flight Attendant. Uh, great actress, you know, so cool character, Madame Rouge. So I'm not really Definitely. into Doom Patrol, but I should check it out. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for me. That's been our show. If you want to get into our recommendations. Yeah, Anything that else? was the show. That was the whole <laughs> show. Um, my recommendation this week is actually the show called The Challenge. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. You might have not. It's a little obscure. But it's a reality TV show on MTV, and I've been watching it. I've been watching it since I was a kid. I actually really mm-hmm. like the challenge. Uh, I've met some of the people who actually have been on that show throughout you know, oh my, my years God. here in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's on Paramount+. Plus, and if I have to recommend a season, it's the 33rd season on Paramount+. Plus. <laughs> oh, it's called man. War of the Worlds. And it's so great because the show brings in all these new faces, but it has all these veterans from the show that have been doing it oh, for okay, years. Yeah. And it mixes them, and it just... There's so much drama between these like veterans that it's mm-hmm. just like 
it just causes the story to just be so much more engaging and interesting than I think um, I expected it to be. Cause I, I literally just clicked on the latest one. I was, I was like, yeah. I haven't seen the show in like six, seven years. So I was like, yeah. let me just watch the latest season. And it turned out to be like super interesting. Like I was mm-hmm. just like, I watched 11 episodes yesterday. So wow. That's a lot. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's my recommendation. What about you, Ryder? Awesome. Uh, I'm going to recommend an old film. And I'm talking 1956. It's called The Searchers. Okay. Why? Because, well, I saw it from my class. And I'm not really into old westerns. But this movie actually really captivated me. And it's John Wayne, directed by John Ford. And so if you're looking for a breath of fresh air and you want to, you know, let go of all this new content, just want to enjoy something, you know, older, check out. It's on HBO Max, The Searchers. Searchers. The searchers, yeah, gotcha. Searchers. That's what it. are they searching for? You know, what are they searching? Yeah, you for? have to find out. You have to just watch it and see. I won't tell. I'll never tell. <laughs> I'll never tell. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll definitely check that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you can go ahead and close this off. That's it for me. I'm all good. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has been a blast. We had so much fun doing today's mm-hmm. episode. This is episode nine of Freeze Frame. If you haven't mm-hmm. already caught up, go ahead and just go back. You know, click on another episode. There's eight of them (laughs) there. So it's like catch up if you haven't, because we're going to be back next week with our big episode 10. Hopefully there's some big news that drops. If not, I'm going to be giving you some spoilers on Falcon and Winter Mm -hmm. Soldier, probably. Snyder Cut reviews. Um, Snyder Cut reviews. That's true. That there is a lot of stuff dropping this week. Mm -hmm. This episode 10 is about to be action packed and i'm gonna have so much fun recording it with you writer so thank you guys so much for all of our listeners on our audio platform spotify google Podcasts, stitcher pandora amazon echo you know or even if you're just watching this on youtube thank you so much for liking Mm -hmm. subscribing and just you know listening to the news of the week because we love delivering it to you we hope you've enjoyed it thank you so much and we'll see you guys on the next one bye-bye everybody